greetings from EMD News and Heart Care Foundation of India. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. KK. Today we have an international expert with us, Dr. Renu Virmani, who is a medical director at CV Path Institute, who is all over the world when it comes to pathology of histopathology of coronary artery disease. The name is synonymous with Dr. Renu Virmani. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, today, we all talk about that coronary artery disease is an epidemic in the country, in India. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, younger and younger people are coming. The sudden cardiac death is common. Uh, people are dying suddenly. 25, people, 25 lakh people die every year because of sudden cardiac death. It is also a well-known fact that Indians' coronaries are different. We have more vulnerable plagues. We have more ruptures of plagues and more sudden deaths. So, from a family physician and MD physician level, I'm not talking about DM cardiology and yeah. a very high level. Yeah. From an MD physician point of view or at a family doctor level point of view, how will you make him understand what a vulnerable plague is? That's a very tough question know, from a, a point of view of family physician to make him understand what's it. We all know heart attacks occur suddenly. And we, with science learned, that we can predict, likely predict, I should say, that where those are likely to occur. We know, for example, the proximal left anterior descending artery is a region which has been called as the widow maker because that's the artery that undergoes most often uh, plaque rupture. So the question really is, plaque rupture, thrombus, can we predict that site? And actually from our studies we can say that there is a site which looks like what rupture looks like, and so therefore we call that a vulnerable plaque. But it hasn't ruptured as yet. So we want to recognize that before it ruptures, before it makes a widow. So I think that's the criteria. Now, how do we recognize by morphology? We recognize it by its presence of a necrotic core, like an abscess there is, and it has a very thin cap. It's a uh, capsule-like coating, which is just like a tumor, for example. Now, that little cap that tears apart and gives rise to flowing blood will thrombose there, and therefore that's how thrombosis occurs. But I think we can recognize this today by CT. Um, you can do angiographic CT, and you can see the vessel wall. In the old days, we only recognized lumens. It's important that the thrombus occurs because of the wall disease, not because of the luminal disease. It occurs because of the disease in the wall. So we must learn to recognize that wall. Is it abnormal or isn't it abnormal before it causes a symptom? And that's how I think we can So in, in, in that prevent. case, all patients who are high risk, that means uncontrolled hypertension, diabetics, smokers, they should have a 64 or a coronary CT done to, for morphology? You know, the, there are studies which are easier. There's a study which um, Dr. Valentin Fuster has done, which has looked at 7,000 people uh, in, the, in Texas, what they did. They uh, sent out vans, and they were doing intimal medial uh, carotid plaque volume rather than intimal medial thickening. And that's a non-invasive procedure. You can do that. They also did CT. Not to say that they didn't do CT. They did CT. They did whole body CT. In fact, what they showed was just the carotid volume plaque, plaque volume, not interval medial ratio. It's the plaque volume. If you do the plaque volume, you can actually predict which patient is going to have a heart attack or predict. Is there a number for the volume? They, they had, I don't remember the details of the volume, I think it's four or five millimeters square, I don't remember the details of that. Okay, so in a, with a simple ultrasound, you should be able to, instead of a thickness, you go for a volume. You will look okay. for volume. In that volume, in that volume, if I do high resolution uh, yeah. carotid ultrasound, I should be able to see if it is heterogeneous, and yes. if I see a, a echo dense periphery, and ecolucent in the area, in the area. and then, then the upper portion I will call it as the cap and the yes. ecolucent will be like a lipid core yes. and if I see an ulcer above that, will that, that is be, for sure that is for sure a vulnerable plaque. A vulnerable plaque, but that's for carotid. Yes. But if you look at carotid, same way in ankle right here, index you no, can no. do. Okay. The same plaque I can see in femoral? 
you could see if you did ankle and break here in, in no, that. No, I'm only talking about femoral plaque. Black artery. is not as predictive not as in the femoral. But ankle break in indexes. Index is much better. And if I do a transesophageal and look for the descending aorta, plaque in there, a rupture of the plaque and vulnerability, is That's, there any study? There's no good study which has done all that. There are some studies that are showing, and that again comes from Mount Sinai, Dr. Fuster's place. What they did, they did CT again, looked at the plaques in the aorta and showed that plaques in the aorta also rupture and that they can be predictive of what's going on. So for me, you know, CT is expensive. Okay. Echo is the cheapest thing. Echo brachial index is cheap. So we should be able to predict from those. And if you want to do CT, absolutely. If calcium score is another one which predict, whole body calcium, if you had in the arterial tree a lot of calcium, you can be rest assured you have coronary disease. Now I don't know in Indians, you know. In, this is all done in Americans, done in Europeans. So, See, I if, with think the carotid, we get. If, if I take carotid as a criteria, yes, as a carotid volume, because I do uh, carotid ultrasounds a lot, yeah, and I'm using the volume as a parameter. Yes, we're doing it every time, and we are finding that volume is a better predictor than the thickness Absolutely. that's there. Okay. But my criteria is, I always look at the plaque and see. The equal, measure the equilucent area. If the equilucent area is more than 40% of the total length, then I... I think that's a very good That's the way I, I roughly take and, and yeah. put the patient on. If, if there is a... If I find the lipid core, I put him 80 milligram of satin. If it is no lipid core, I put him on 10 milligram of satin. I mean, that's my rough criteria with no data. But I actually like that. What you should do is we need to do a study amongst Indians. And we need to do a population-based study that is prospective we'll be able to then predict how good these are predictors for our population. You know, we're different. We're short, we're, you know, whatever characteristics are different. And I think we need to establish characteristics for ourselves. Okay, if we have a vulnerable plaque, again now, now we, we uh, say as an echocardiographer, we label uh, vulnerable plaque. Yes. Now, what are the treatment modalities available where you have shown them regressing? I'm talking about yes, because the statins regression is the you will only. prove. Statins is the only. Statins is the only high one dose. which has high dose statins. Now, people are saying if you do risk management, you can actually show a reduction. But it's more anecdotal rather than real studies because it's very hard to change people's habits. As Dr. Fuster was, I was just at his meeting, and he very nicely showed, he said, it'll have an effect for three months in a patient even after he's had a heart attack. After that, he's back to his old system, his old habits. So it's very important that we emphasize and teach people that risk factor management is very is important. important. Yeah. Any role of aspirin or anything, you know? I believe in the role of aspirin. I believe that aspirin, I've been on aspirin for 20 years. I believe it is a good thing because anti after all, the thrombus forms from platelets. And if you can reduce the platelet reactivity, I think you have a better chance. Okay, let me go away from the vulnerable plates. Yes. What are your hobbies? What are my hobbies? Traveling. Traveling? <laughs> yes. So you travel all over? I have traveled all over, the thanks to my husband. Place, the best three places you have traveled? I have uh, Patagonia in Chile, just absolutely beautiful on earth. Uh, the second best place, I've been to South Georgia Island, which is very close to the Antarctic. And the third prettiest place probably is Baffin Island, around Baffin Island. Okay. If the government of India invites you to come out a major policy change to reduce the burden of coronary artery disease in the country, what will be your suggestion? Diet. Diet. I would say all this ghee is not, fried is not allowed, and that we emphasize what is healthy food and sweets. The Indian population loves sweets. They eat fried food all the time. They believe in ghee as being the best. And we know that is and not specifically true. Specifically, it's trans fat, which we and do. And trans fat. We must get rid of that idea. And I think we will not only help hypertension, salt, of course, uptake is also very important. But if you manage food, and teach people about food intake, I think we can solve a lot of our problems. Yeah. Recently, there is a guideline change, and they say that instead of mouth to mouth resuscitation, only hands on yes. CPR is sufficient for revival of a person who has died of a sudden cardiac death. Yes. And uh, the mantra is within 10 minutes of death, earlier the better. At least for the next 10 minutes, compress the center of the chest with a speed of 10 into 10, and that is 100 per minute. Yeah. What are your views about teaching it to the public? 
Oh, I think everybody should know. Every high school kid should be, before they graduate, should know how to do CPR. Because you could save a large number of people who are dying suddenly. I, I absolutely believe mouth to mouth respiration is not required. I think it is majority of the time it's cardiac death where we really save people. We can't save most of the time other causes of death. So what Dr. Renu Virmani says is that if she is a policymaker in the country, she will emphasize on diet, diet, and diet. A healthy diet can prevent not only heart attacks but also cardiac arrest. Thank you for being in our show. Thank you. Be grateful. And that's all for today. We'll come back with one more show. Till that, goodbye. Thank you.